Good morning, good morning. How are you guys doing today? All right, all right. Y'all can have a seat. My name is Kimberly. I'm the children's director here at Cross Point. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this long holiday weekend to worship with us this morning. We are excited to see you all here. Now, on your way in, if you're here in person, you have a Connect card like this on your seat. This is an opportunity for you to connect with us and for us to connect with you. Now, if you're online, you can go in the comments and go to crosspointlive.com connect and all of the same information is there. Or if you want an even easier way, you can text the word connect to us at 352-268-0099. Now, when you have that card, however you might access it, just give us any information you're comfortable sharing or anything that might need updated in our system. This allows us to make sure that you stay in the loop on everything happening here at Crosspoint and for you to let us know what's going on with you and how we can come alongside of you. If you're a first time guest though, snag this card, take it out to the lobby because we definitely have Crosspoint swag, a little gift that we wanna give you just to thank you for coming here to worship with us today. On the back of the card is a place for next steps and Pastor Paul's gonna talk about those a little bit later in service and a place for your prayer requests and really, that's my favorite part of the card because the prayer request, that's the moment that you can tell us, this is where we're at, come along with me in it. When you write your prayer request there, when you write your go gods down there, it gives us the opportunity as a pastoral and prayer staff to pray with you all week long, specifically in the season that you are in. So fill out that card and then you can drop them in the boxes all around the auditorium at the end of service. Now, normally we take this moment to go over announcements and, and things that are coming up because there's a ton of that. But how about this morning we just take a minute to look over the last few weeks and, and we've stood up here and told you we have this going on and that going on, but we wanna just take a second to reflect the way that our Crosspoint family has showed up in the last few weeks. So about a month ago, we did a, a drive in the lobby for Fostering Hope Kids Closet. This is an opportunity for us to come alongside of an organization in our community that equips foster parents all over our county. And man, you guys, you can see right there, you guys showed up and showed out. So thank you. Thank you for donating and showing Fostering Hope Kids Closet that we care about them because God cares about them. And then like a week or two later, we did kind of the same thing, right? But for Jericho Roads Ministry. And man, Guys, we filled a whole box truck out back in one day. When we talk about For Hernando, our goal is to show people that God loves them before they even know his name. And it's things like this, when we show God's love in a practical way, it's these moments that they can see his love in action through our church family. So thank you, Crosspoint. Give yourself a big clap for that one. Man, you guys went above and beyond, and we appreciate your generosity for Hernando. And there will be a few more things coming up over the next few weeks and months, so keep an eye on our social media. Crosspointlive.com has tons of information, and of course, we'll tell you every Sunday right here, too. So we're going to jump right back into worship. Let's take a moment to stop and pray. Father, we thank you for today. God, we come here this morning to focus on you, to worship your name. God, and we thank you for the opportunities you have given us to show your love over the past, over the past few weeks or, or the past few days. God, whatever that looks like, we thank you for the hearts of a church family that loves you so much that it overflows onto everybody around them. God, we're called to serve you with all of our gifts, with all of our talents, with all of our treasures. God, and and on this weekend, we take an extra moment to honor and thank the ones who have served you and who have stood up for us by giving their all, by giving their life. So this Memorial Day, God, we take a moment and we thank you for their sacrifice. God, and we pray that as we walk this place, as we continue to serve you, God, that we do it in a way that honors you that brings you all glory through the things that we do, through our actions, our words, our, our conversations, God, that, that you are glorified. We pray today that you speak to us loudly, 
that we hear your voice, that, that the distractions of our everyday are set aside, and that here today in this moment, we open our hearts, we open our minds to what it is that you have for us. We know you are a generous God. We know when we seek your wisdom, you pour it out on us. So we seek you today, Father. We seek your wisdom, your guidance. And we stand in anticipation of the movement you want to make in our lives. We love you, Father. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you and we recognize who you are today. You are the God who created us, the almighty heavenly Father, giver of life, redeemer of souls. You are our rock and our fortress. You are our safe place. And today, Lord God, we just come before you with gratitude in our hearts and we say thank you. Thank you that in every hour of need, you are present. Thank you that when we cannot feel your presence, you surround us with brothers and sisters of faith to stand in the gap. God, thank you for this moment. May our hearts and our minds be open. May we hear your heart, Father, and may we follow after you with all that we are, with this gift of life you have blessed us with. May we live in to the fullest. May we become the people of faith you have destined us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning. My name is Paul, and I'm the lead pastor here at Cross Point. And it is an honor and a privilege to be here with you guys today. We are wrapping up our series called Forever, but we are also wrapping up the Sermon on the Mount. In January, we started just in Jesus' teaching in the book of Matthew, which is in this very famous sermon. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. It covers a myriad of different things, and it talks about the things that matter in God's kingdom. It talks about how you and I can grow to our full potential. How do we go to the next level? It talked about some hard truths about some issues in our own self that are holding us back. And it talks about eternity. And as Jesus wraps up this teaching... I want, to po- I, want to, I want to pose a question to you. And you don't have to answer it out loud. Just to think about it. And it's just as this. Do you want to be wise? Do you want to be wise? Because I think the reality is if, if wisdom and being wise is on one hand, on the other hand would be being foolish. And no one wants their life to be marked by being a fool. But most of us would say, you know what, if I had to choose between being a fool or being a wise, I'd be wise. I don't want to be a fool. I don't want to make foolish decisions. I don't want to live in a life where I have the consequences of foolish decisions. I want to make wise decisions. I want to make good decisions. I want to be blessed in the consequences. I want the things that I do to make my life better, to bless me, to bless my family, and to put me in a position to enjoy the most life has to offer. And if that's where you're at this morning, then as we wrap up this series, as we wrap up this teaching time that we've been on since January, then I believe that God is going to speak some great truth to you this morning. Because as Jesus wraps up this teaching, he literally talks about being wise and being foolish and about what separates those two realities in our life. So if you guys have your Bibles, would you go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 7? And as we're finishing up, we're going to be in verse 24. And we're just going to cover the last few verses of this chapter in the Gospel of Matthew. And the words are going to be up here on the screens. There's a stack of free Bibles in the back. That's our gift to you. And if you're joining us online, welcome. We're so excited to have you here with us. And you can just follow along on this broadcast. But in Matthew chapter 7, in verse 24 and 25, it says, Therefore, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like the wise man who built his house on the rock. Let's go back to the beginning of that. It says, therefore. Now, the therefore, if you've actually managed to um, pass school, right? Like, the therefore is a word that says, everything I just said, this is the result. 
So what you need to do is if you're just joining us is you need to go back and you need to watch online all of the messages since January. Because literally that's what Jesus is saying. All the truth that I just gave you, all of the knowledge that I just dropped starting in chapter five and going all the way to chapter seven, if you do all of that, therefore everyone who hears these words of mine, but not just hears them, what do you gotta do? Put it into, awesome for seven of you. Let's try it again. Put it into practice. practice. You got to not just hear what Jesus says, you got to actually do what Jesus says. Now, can I get an amen from all of the parents in the room? Amen. Amen. If our kids just did what we said, we wouldn't need coffee or wine or a vacation, right? Like... I don't know at what level they think brushing their teeth was optional today. Right? Like at what level is not beating your sister optional? Like at what level is cleaning your room? Could you please do me a favor when you take off those dirty clothes, turn them right side out before you throw them across the house? Like, I mean, if they they would just listen and what, put it into practice, my life would be better. Their life would be better. Life on planet Earth would be better. And Jesus is laying down some wisdom here as like the heavenly father gathering the kids around. He says, listen, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like the wise man who built his house on the rock. And now he's gonna use this analogy of building here, right? And for us at Crosspoint, we're pretty familiar, right? Since August of last year, man, we've been going through this building process, and if you guys have been watching with us, we had an awesome update video last week, and keep it up, man, every time, just watching them build what's gonna be our permanent main campus of Crosspoint Church, right? And all of the stuff that they've been doing the last, like, six months, it's great. But if they screwed up the foundation, it don't matter, right? Like, that foundation is essential because without the good foundation, nothing else will stand. And Jesus is saying, this is the same way it is in your life. He says, like, if you listen to these words, you're like the wise man who built his house on the rock. Listen to verse 25. It says, the rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew, and beat against that house. Who knew Jesus was talking about hurricane season, right? Listen, he says, the rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew, and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Let's go back and read that again just so that we really understand what's coming against, right? The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew, and beat against the house. I wish this was an option for our lives. But Jesus doesn't speak like if the rain comes down, if the streams rise, if the winds blow, and quietly tap on your home. What he's saying is, in your life, storms are going to come. They are going to beat against you. They are going to try to take you down. Life has consequences, and it ain't all sunshine and palm trees. In fact, my mom said if she ever wrote a book, it would be this, moving to Florida, it ain't all sunshine and palm trees, (laughs) right? Man, that's life. This stuff is going to happen. The question isn't if Winds are going to come. Rains are going to come. It's not if I'm going to have hard days. It's not if junk is going to happen, if crises are going to happen, if people are going to turn on me, if someone's going to hurt me, if I'm going to have financial hardship. It's not if, if, if. It's when, when, when. He says this, when that happens, what foundation are you built on? Because if your foundation is on the rock, you won't fall. You may get beat against, you may struggle, the roof may leak a little, you could get three feet of standing water in the living room, but it ain't going to crumble. 
if the foundation is good. But then he goes on and he says, let me paint the other picture for you, right? The next few verses, he says this in verse 26. He says, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice. Every one of these who acts like a child and doesn't do what I say is like the foolish man who built his house on the sand in Spring Hill. I mean, um, <laughs> like, I know it's a little stretch. Like, we don't understand rock as a foundation. In Florida, we have artificial rock foundation. We call it concrete and rebar, right? I mean, when they were pouring the foundation for the new building, it was like four feet wide and four feet deep of concrete and steel. In fact, when they poured the concrete just for the carport, like, like it was two concrete trucks full of concrete. That carport will withstand a nuclear blast, right? Like that thing ain't going anywhere. It is so firm in that ground. They literally said it's like the strongest part of the whole building. And we're like, oh, we'll see. We'll see, right? But he says, man, if you don't put into practice the words of God, you're like the foolish man who built his house on the sand, it says, the rains came, the streams rose, the winds blew, and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. And Jesus is saying, you have two choices. You could be wise in this life, or you could be foolish. You know what separates the wise from the foolish? Not the words of God, not if storms are coming. The difference between the wise and the foolish is the wise person puts those words into practice in their life. The foolish person just listens to him. The wise person hears the word of God, studies the word of God, and allows God's word to change and transform them from the inside out. The foolish person, they just hear it. They just hear it, but they don't ever actually put it into practice. The reality is for most of us today, whether this is your first time in church or this is your 500th time in church, you already know enough about how to live a godly life. You're like, well, Pastor Paul, this is my first day here. I don't know that much about God. In fact, I've never heard a preacher before. I don't know. Are you a good one? I'm going to have to judge this later on. Listen, if you just do what God says. Well, I mean, look, what's some of the basic things that God said? Well, later on in the book of Matthew, he's going to say that love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. He says, if you do that, you have summed up every other rule, regulation, commandment, and everything else that God says in the entire Bible. All you got to do is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Are you saying that's it? That's like the cliff notes? Yeah, that's it. Everything in here, all 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament, thousands and thousands of pages, hundreds of thousands of words. That's it. Summed up two sentences. That sounds pretty easy. Yeah, now go put it into practice. Go live it out. People will say, but man, I don't know. Isn't there more to it? Nope. Jesus didn't come to make life more complicated. He came to make it more simple. And he literally just told us that if you want to have a wise, if you want to be a wise person, then all you got to do is just put it into practice because life is going to come at you hard. Situations and circumstances, things are going to happen. And I love that where it says, man, and the winds beat against the house. Because sometimes it doesn't just feel like you're taking a beating. It doesn't just feel like you're just taking a beating and you just can't stand up. Now, I grew up uh, in a small town up north called New York City. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it. And... Um, and in the city, uh, like if we wanted to go, even though we were on like the East Coast, like if you wanted to go to the beach and stuff like that, you know, we would, we would drive uh, to Jones Beach. Um, like seven of you probably know about Jones Beach, right? Jones Beach. And uh, yeah, thank you. And so like we would go out there. Now, I want to let you know a difference between the East Coast of, of New York and the West Coast of Florida. In the East Coast of New York, we have these things called waves. 
And we have this thing called like undertow and current and stuff like that. And I remember being a little kid, being there at Jones Beach, and I remember like the waves just pummeling you, right? And like, man, I don't know about you guys if you've ever experienced this, but where you just get beat down and you go to stand up and before you can even get up, right, the next wave hits you and the next wave hits you and then your bathing suit's half off, you got sand in places you didn't know, and you're just hoping that you smash into somebody bigger who can just pick you up and save your life, right? Man, and and it's in those moments, whether you're five years old or 25 or 55, when that happens, literally, you just want salvation. You just want rescue. But when you're sitting on the beach, laying on some tanning lotion, looking all fly because you've been working out, (laughs) sipping your White Claw or whatever, right? Right? You don't need salvation because you're good. It's not until the storms come that your foundation gets tested. It's not until the raves and the winds and the brains and all these things start being, man, now is the question of, man, what is your life built on? Is it built on the promises and the truth of an eternal, everlasting God? Or is it built on the things that are fleeting and fading and don't last? Because on the surface, on a bright, sunny day, man, everything looks good. But on those dark, stormy, rainy, cloudy, nasty, torrential, horrendous, tragic days of life, what are you built on? What are you built on? And God's word promises us this. He says, man, if you put it into practice, your house, your life will stand. If you put it into practice, you will stand in victory, right? I mean, these are the words of Jesus. It's not my words. This is what he said. I love it because he's trying to clue us in. That's what I love about Jesus. It's like Jesus is like faith for dummies in his teaching, right? Right? Like, he doesn't make it complicated. You don't need a PhD. You don't need a degree. You don't need to speak Hebrew to understand the Old Testament and Greek to understand the New Testament. Like, you don't need to understand all these things. And I don't need to have, like, some, some, some 20-year devotional life to understand the very simple truth of this. God wants the best for you. And what he says is it comes by obeying what he says. Amen. Blessing always comes after obedience. Intangible and intangible ways. And God says, listen, I wish life didn't have some storms, and one day it won't, but that place is called heaven. And until that time, as you and I get there, if we want to withstand life here, build our life on the rock. The word of God put into practice each and every day. The word of God put into practice each and every day. And then as he was teaching and he wrapped it up, listen to the response of the audience in verse 28 and 29. It says this, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teachings. Because he taught as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. See, up until that point, everybody who was teaching about God's word wasn't the author of God's word. See, when Jesus talked about these principles, these weren't just great ideas and suggestions. These were, in essence, his very character and nature put on display and advice being given directly from the source that even ordinary folks, hard class, hard, hardworking, blue collar, working class people, ordinary people like the rest of us here today, they sat back and they said, when he was done with this teaching, that guy. He's amazing. We've never heard anybody speak like him. He speaks as someone who has authority. He speaks as the guy in charge. And the beautiful thing in all of that teaching that Jesus laid out over those three chapters in the book of Matthew, it was never from a position of demanding 
fellowship. It was never as someone who was telling us, it's this way or you'll be punished. It was always under the encouragement of, there's a better way to live that will breathe life into you, that will bring joy and peace to your soul, and that will set you up for blessing. He spoke as one inviting us to be a part of something miraculous and life-changing but not as someone forcing it upon us. He issued an invitation that's open to all. Now that's what we do here at Crosspoint. We just repeat those great truths and we invite others to join us on this journey of putting his words into practice. Would you guys go ahead and pull out that Connect card that my friend Kimberly talked about earlier in the service? On the bottom of that Connect card, there are some next steps. And here at Crosspoint, we always start the next steps with the most important next step, and that is to put your faith in Christ. So that first next step that you guys will see there on your Connect quarter, a card if you're watching online is, I will accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I will accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. It's that same invitation. Well, God is saying, listen, if you want to be able to withstand this life, if you want the blessings that come in this life and the life to come, then wisdom says put your faith in the one who created life. Put your faith and trust in the God who loves you, who made you. Put your faith in the God who looks at all of the sins and all the mistakes and all the junk of your life and then whips out his eraser and says, I got you covered. I'm not going to hold that against you. I died to pay that debt. You are debt free from sins and mistakes and junk and garbage. You are a new creation because I came that you might have life and have it to the full. I came to set you free. I came to let you know you can build a life that can withstand everything. You just need me as the foundation. That's what this next step says. I will accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And if that's you this morning, we want to give you that opportunity. Right where you're seated or if you're watching online, I'm asking everybody to bow your heads and close your eyes. Nobody moving around, no distractions. In this moment, if the Holy Spirit of God is impressing upon you, what's been missing in your life is a personal relationship with Christ. Then build your life on the firm foundation of Jesus. Pray with me. Dear God, here I am. Today I surrender my life to you. All that I was, all that I am, all that I will ever be, God, I lay it down at your feet. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again in victory for my sins and my mistakes, to set me free and to give me life, to change and transform me from the inside out, to help me build a life that could withstand the storms, but also be blessed in the sunniest of days. That whether I'm on the mountaintop or I'm on the valley, when I have you, Jesus, by my side, I know we'll make it through. And so, God, I want you in my life forever. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer, would you go ahead and check off that next step or click the link next to this broadcast? We would love to come alongside you as your church family and just help you on your faith journey. Second next step is this. I will sign up and get baptized on June 6th. Next Sunday, right here in this auditorium, we're going to do baptism. And baptism is an outward expression of that decision I just made to accept Christ. Baptism is literally like this three-dimensional picture. Like my old life is dead and buried and raised in its place is a new life with Jesus as my Lord and Savior. A new life, ready, check this out, on a firm foundation. A new life built on the rock. It'd be our privilege to baptize you next Sunday. Whether you accepted Christ today or 20 years ago or somewhere in between, we would love to help you take that next step of obedience. Third next step is this. 
I will put Christ's words into practice. Man, this is so awesome. We have an opportunity to not, not be fools anymore, but to be wise. How awesome would that be to people think about you? Like, oh, well, you know Pastor Paul? Yeah, he's wise. Well, I thought he was a fool. No. He put the words of God into practice in his life. The Bible says he's wise. I'm not perfect, and that's what I love. The Scripture doesn't say if you want perfect. Perfect is Jesus, not perfect Paul. But he says not perfect Paul can what? Be wise and doesn't have to be a fool if he puts the words of God into practice in his life. So whether it's a sunny day or a stormy day, God's at work helping me, leading me, teaching me, growing me to be more like him, to be blessed in tangible and intangible ways so that regardless of what comes my way, I know where my way is leading me, to my heavenly father, to being more like him and to being a blessing to those around me, helping me love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my strength, with all my soul, and helping me love each and every person as I love myself. That's what it means to follow after God and to put his words into practice. Last next steps as I'll memorize Matthew 7, 24. I love the promise of God. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like the wise man who built his house on the rock. Let's be wise men and women and let's build our house on the rock by putting into practice all these great words of God that we have heard over the last five months. And let's start today reflecting that truth by how we live and by how we treat one another and how we love our God. It's been an honor and a privilege to share this series and to share this Sermon on the Mount with you. And I can't wait for what God has in store for us next month as we kick off a brand new series. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful for today, for the truth of your word and the promises that I don't got to live in my past anymore. I don't have to be a fool anymore, that I could be wise by hearing your words and putting them into practice. That when you speak, Father, when you convict me, when you let me know when something in my life is out of alignment, whether that's a thought process or words or actions or behaviors, that God, when I address that and I, and I get back in line and I begin to follow and do the things that you've called me to, the best that you have for me, that God, my life will stand. My life will be built on a firm foundation and I have nothing to fear. So God, today, my prayer for me, for everyone, Father, is that we would hear your words and put them into practice. That we would walk with you humbly. We would listen to what you have to say. And as obedient children, follow, implement, and just do what you say. And in doing so, Father, being blessed in this life and the life to come. Father, as we turn in our connect cards and our offering envelopes, whether we've given online or whatever it is, God, we just come back to you today. And we say, God, everything we have is yours. My time, my talents, my treasure. Because God, I know in your hands, following your lead, God, you got this. You got me. You got my family. You got my life. You have my eternity. You've got our church. You've got our community. You've got our nation and you've got the world. For you are God and we are your people putting into practice your words as we live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week at 9, 30, and 11 for baptism right here. It's going to be an awesome Sunday.